Welcome back to another video guys, in this one we're going to take a look at how I layer when I'm hiking. So welcome back guys, thank you for joining me here once again. We're back out on what has turned into a really nice day, which kind of puts a little bit of problems to what I was kind of planning to do. But anyway, it doesn't matter, we'll make do. So, um, what we're doing today is we're going to have a look, I'm out on a walk here, I'm out on a hike. Um, it's about 20 kilometres uh, actually, um, about a five hour walk up through some of the hills and forests in my area. Um, and what I wanted to do was as we go and as I do certain things, I want to talk to you about how I layer when I'm hiking. Now I've done a video not that long ago and I'll leave a link up in the corner. Uh, and in the description to that video and it that was going through my outdoor clothing but I pretty much focused in that video on bushcraft rather than hiking so when I when I'm hiking my layering system is slightly different it's slightly more technical and it's slightly more uh, important to get right so basically what we'll do is we'll, we'll you know we'll, we'll walk about we'll go along this route that I've got um, and I'll discuss uh, what I'm doing and when I'm doing it and things like that. Um, but yeah, it's uh, as I said, it's turned into an absolutely glorious day. Now the sun has come out, which I was kind of, it wasn't meant to, there was meant to be showers and stuff today, but I think we're actually going to be in for quite a warm one. So just while I'm here, I thought I'd talk about what I'm currently wearing before we get going, predominantly on my top half here. So. When we're hiking, our layers have to be a little bit more purposeful and a little bit more adaptable um, because we're changing uh, climactic conditions and, uh, you know, temperatures quite a lot. So, what I'm wearing is, first of all, I have a long sleeve um, base layer top on. Now, this one has a little uh, kind of quarter zip at the top as well with quite a large collar so that allows me to keep some sun off my neck as well as keeping things like the binocular strap a little bit more comfortable. Now why do I go with long sleeves? A little bit more usable, um, you can roll them up or you can pull them down, whatever you need to do. And then over the top of that I've got this new garment which I just got the other day which is a rab, uh, it's a very thin fleece uh, top, it's a, basically a thinner version of the top you've seen me wearing a lot. Uh, the the North uh, North Ridge fleece that I wear. It, this is basically a thinner version of the same thing. And basically, this is my now go-to kind of combination for my top half uh, as a minimum. Unless it gets really warm and we need to go down to just the base layer, this is basically what I'm going to be wearing. Um, in terms of bottom half, pretty much all the time when I'm out hiking or even day to day, I'm rocking a pair of mountain equipment, uh, Ibex uh, pants or trousers. Uh, that is my uh, preferred choice. So I've been walking for about half an hour now since that last clip and uh, we've reached the next point at which I wanted to stop at which is uh, this uh, stone here behind me or it's two stones and I'll show you around in a minute um, but this location is called Jean Carr's Stone and it's actually a massive boulder that at one point was one boulder and it now has a substantial sized rowan tree growing straight up through the middle of it and has actually split it in half and this whole area is said to be to do with witches and things like that. Can't remember the entire law. There is a sign over there which I'll, sh I'll uh, put up a clip here in a minute of uh, and let you have a read of it. But it's a perfect little spot to uh, stop and uh, talk about our next bit of clothing. So obviously I'm still wearing what I've been wearing. I actually at one point was able to, I would have been able to drop to just the base layer. I didn't, but I could have, it got that warm. But... Um, when we stop, 
if we've been sweating and working hard, we're gonna get cold. So it's important to put on another layer. Now, on a cold day, what I'd probably reach for is a different layer. But today, all I'm gonna reach for is my, that fleece I referenced earlier, the North Ridge, uh, North Ridge fleece here that I use or have been using as my main mid layer up until recently when I re got this uh, Rab one. So I'm just gonna throw that over the top of my Rab fleece. And that's just gonna keep the chill off whilst I sit here uh, and have a drink and stuff and uh, catch a breath, which is actually the other thing I want to talk about here, which is my system when I'm hiking. So how I tend to work, and I think it's a really good way of doing it, is um, half an hour walk, short three to five minute break to get a drink, maybe have a really quick snack, continue. Do that for about two hours. So about four, on that fourth break, um, after two hours personally, I then stop for about 20 minutes to half an hour, slightly longer break, have a larger snack. That would be also the same for a lunch kind of break. Um, and yeah, that's kind of how I work. And I think it's an important thing to learn is how to best operate like that. Uh, so you don't run yourself into the green, but you also get your job, uh, you know, your objective complete and you're not just wasting your time uh, and sitting about and not doing much. So let's, uh, I'll show you around here and then uh, we'll see what happens. So this is the stone here itself. So just my bag there. Um, the plastic tubs in there, just before folk wonder, they are actually geocaches. Didn't know there was one here, but it is. So as I say, this boulder here was at one point one big boulder, and in this rowan tree, not that birch, but this rowan, has actually split the boulder and has grown straight up through the middle of it here. And it is said that the reason that that has happened is because witches did something or other. I can't remember the entire lore. But if we come back over here, there's a sign. And uh, I'll let you read it, and I can read it. And... Uh, I can't remember the, the full breakdown, but this should hopefully tell us. So, Jean Carr's stone. Uh, the stone in front of you is a large conglomerate boulder left from the Ice Age one million years ago and has probably lain here more or less unnoticed until the, the arrival of Jean Carr in the 18th century. The story goes, although only pieces remain, that a young girl named Jean Carr was to quote a sentence from old records, Fan she wished a lassie. She was chained in the hoose by her father, and fan he deet. Jean said there was two prisoners relieved. After this, she fled, took to the open road, and led the life of a gypsy, becoming a, fam a familiar figure in the area between Banff and Falkabers. She led this happy life under the stars until the birth of her child. The local authority snatched the child and housed it for, s for safety, with the village nurse. In an attempt to recover the child, Jean tore at the thatched roof of the nurse's home, only to be arrested and put in jail. After this incident, the child was never seen again, and Jean, now childless, took to helping herself to other people's, becoming a known nuisance in the local towns. Sometime later, it was announced in a local paper that her son had died and Jean's life was never the same again. At night she would be disappearing into the countryside and for many years refuge, uh, took refuge uh, under this stone. She was still seen wandering the byways as an old frail woman until one morning she was found wrapped in her tattered shawl, lying in her favourite place under the ancient friendly rock, cold and dead. She now lies in pauper's grave somewhere in Murray, but memory lingers on. So it doesn't say much about witches now. From my memory, it is to do with that. And I think the idea is that um, it's claimed something along the lines of she was a witch. And uh, that's why the tree sprouted out or something along those lines. But I might be wrong. Um, but nevertheless, it's still a cool little location. So...
Um, so this bit's going to be a bit rushed and a bit rudimentary because it's started to rain so I'm needing to get it going but I also need to film it because this is what this video is about. So our next layer is of course a shell layer for the weather. So in my case I use this Rab, I think it's a Pertex shield. I don't know how long this rain's going to last, but we're going to put this on anyway. And there we go. So, having some kind of waterproof layer quickly accessible is super important. Because you never know when those conditions are going to change. And, uh... You don't want your mid layers and stuff getting wet. So yeah, you can see we're on a much more, this bit's clearly been renovated recently and they've put down this fresh uh, um, road material. So uh, yeah, we're gonna be heading off that direction so uh, we'll get back to it, but yeah, shell layer. It's been a while since I have uh, spoken to you. Um, I've still got the uh, shell jacket on here as you can see, but I don't actually need it for the rain. Uh, the rain stopped within about five minutes, but I actually did this along with a bit of a windbreaker. Because it's been quite windy on the downhill that I've been coming down. So, um, that's the point that you can use your shell jacket not only for the rain and that kind of weather, but also for uh, wind. Now, What I've picked here to stop at uh, by the uh, the burn here behind you is where I'm going to have lunch. But I am just going to throw on my extra layer here in a moment. But I wanted to talk about my, one of my oh, my final layer for this video, which I don't need for today. But that is a down jacket or a puffy jacket. Um, these are super valuable, especially if you're going to go up hills or anything like that. Um, this is your best bet when you then stop, um, especially on a really cold day. So I always have one of these in the bottom of my bag when I'm out hiking, even if I don't think I'm going to need it. So I'm just going to stop here and sit down and enjoy the scenery. Uh, I've already got some water uh, out the burn using my filter. And I'm just going to have my lunch and then uh, we'll go from there. But So that's going to about do it for this video, guys. Um, so hopefully you maybe learned something from that. Um, and you uh, maybe picked up on some things that maybe you should be carrying or that you might not need to carry. Realistically, that is, is more than enough than you need to carry. Certainly on a day like today, it's, uh, you know, start a spring here. Um, and this is more than enough than I would need. If it was going to be particularly cold or a winter conditions and I was going to be going up a, a mountain, for example, then I might carry an extra mid layer. But to be honest, the two uh, fleeces plus the down jacket is more than enough. Um, the one thing I didn't mention was uh, a shell layer for the bottom half. I didn't talk about the bottom half much. Generally the bottom half for all outdoor things is a lot more boring than the top half because this is where we lose most of our heat from. I obviously mentioned about the fact that I mostly rock mountain equipment Ibex uh, trousers for when I'm outdoors uh, and are generally my daily drivers most of the time. But in terms of a shell layer, uh, a a simple cheap pair of waterproof uh, shell trousers is what I carry, uh, I'm not going to get them out. I do have them with me along with uh, a hat, some buffs and a glove, uh, and a pair of the gloves, uh, which is all the same as when I'm in the woods, um, which I obviously am now, but, um, and in terms of socks, darn tough. Standard standards, a lot of the stuff as I say does carry over between bushcraft and uh, hiking. The reason that this is a separate video from that one is because the top half does change and 
for bush uh, for hiking it's a lot more technical it's a lot more involved um, and it's when you're hiking it is about changing layers quite frequently and almost inconveniently frequently um, that's just the way it is uh, to keep ourselves uh, in the best condition we possibly can when we're in the woods we've got a little bit more flexibility sometimes we've got fires going to keep us warm um, we're not moving quite so much so sweat doesn't become quite as much of a problem and things like that so yeah um, as I said hopefully you learned something from this um, and uh, basically the rest of my route is just going to be uh, heading home uh, we're basically towards the end of the exciting stuff of the route so I'm not really going to show any of that um, I'm, I'm cutting the route short and it was originally going to be um, but that's all right and this has been a lovely little spot to stop and have lunch so yeah so thank you guys for watching this video if you liked it make sure to hit that like button and please do consider subscribing down below if you're new while you're down there maybe leave a comment 